Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on Watchbox Reviews or our website. Email me and my crew at tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a watch launched in 2013 at Basel World. This is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe in red gold. 43 millimeters in diameter. The watch measures 13.5 millimeters thick without the NATO strap and 15.7 millimeters thick with the NATO strap. 49.8 millimeters from lug to lug. The watch has a broad and modern 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Let's throw it on the wrist real quick, then we'll take a look at the hardware and the software. As you can see, the NATO strap changes the look and the fit. The watch sits a bit higher on the wrist. It looks a little bit more spec war and casual, although make no mistake, with rose gold hardware, this is the poshest NATO strap you'll ever find. It fits easily, though it does tower above the wrist. I would recommend on... A wrist as small as 14 centimeters that you wear this watch with confidence. I would say on a strap, the watch wears well on a 14 centimeter wrist and up. Now the timepiece does feature an impressive Blancpain native NATO strap. So this is a factory piece, and as you can see, the minders are not just made of rose gold, but they are immaculately satinated and faceted. You can see that the same is true of the buckle itself, which features a lovely recess in the buckle for the pin, attention to detail, satination, 18 karat, and as you can see, the minders on both sides are gold. It gets better. There is a leather gusset of sorts, a, a sort of gouge resistant protection mechanism to avoid gouging of the strap and thus premature aging of the strap. So the attention to detail and the materials quality is excellent. Now one of the fringe benefits of my job is that I become exceptionally talented at tearing down NATO straps on the spur of the moment to demonstrate case backs. And that's exactly what we're gonna do right here. I'm gonna demonstrate the movement after we talk about some of the rest of the watch. Now you can see the bezel here is red gold to match the timepiece itself. And unlike the standard 50 Fathoms, which has a sapphire cap, this is a scratch resistant ceramic capped bezel. Let's hear the action of the detent. It's sharp, pronounced, precise, and premium. You see how you can line up that luminescent pearl with the minute hand, and now you have an impromptu zero to 60 minute count up timer. Give me a dive bezel over a chronograph any day. The case is simple, minimally beveled at its edge, squared off lug profiles. You can see satin finish throughout for a subdued look, and there's a no guard big crown profile that's designed to be a little bit more nostalgic and vintage evocative than the standard 50, 15, 50 fathoms. On the dial, you can see black with rose gold indices and rose gold baton hands with a needle style extension. Note the loomed seconds hand. Every dive watch should have that. High-end, premium, 300 meters water resistant, cloaking the caliber 1315. Now let's get a little bit closer here. As close as I can without corrupting things. You could see this movement with a five-day power reserve. Exceptionally features three mainspring barrels, giving it one of the longest set of legs of any dive watch on the market. Now the timepiece is adjusted, as you can see, in an exceptional six positions, one more than the chronometer standard. So it is exceptionally precise, and I've seen these run in practice in use to plus one second a day. You have the three barrels, the five day power reserve, the six position adjustment, 35 joules, hacking seconds and a quick set date, and shock resistance in the form of a free sprung balance and anti-magnetism in the form of a silicon hairspring. The standard 50 fathoms have a, a soft iron cage around the movement so you can't see it. The bathyscaphe has a silicon hairspring so you can see the movement and still be anti-magnetic. Now you can see there is satination on the rotor. There's also media blasting. All screw heads are black polished. This is an extensively hand finished movement. We'll get as close as we can and you can see that double finish on the rotor. You can also see there's an interesting sort of dressage or spiraled brushed satination across the bridges, not Cote de Genève, something more imaginative and distinctive. You could see there is satination on all of the wheels and there is mirrored unglage and you can really see it on the edge of the bridges with black polished screws featuring chamfered slots and there's engine turning on the base plate. So hailing from Les Brasseaux, I will actually pronounce this better finished than the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Divers Caliber 3120, the other high-end dive watch from Les Brasseaux, Advantage Blancpain. For good measure, Blancpain, making about 10 to 15,000 watches a year, also builds far fewer watches than Audemars Piguet, so exclusivity is assured. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com to take the plunge with this 50 Fathoms. Launched in 1953, the 50 Fathoms was the world's first modern format dive watch. 
Bathyscaphe by night continued the tradition.